and imagine what it's like trying to do all that work in the snow that we had last night. Well, so far we've been talking about the immediate future of the East Coast Main Line, but elsewhere in the British Rail corporate structure, there are some people who are looking further ahead to the mid and the long-term future. They're concerned with the shape of the railway in the 21st century. Foremost amongst them are the scientists and the engineers of British Rail's technical centre at Derby. British Rail has its own research division based at Derby. Here, behind the day-to-day -day running of the railway, it researches new ideas and uses modern methods such as computer-aided design to look into every aspect of railway engineering. The main areas of research are into vehicles, structure and control. And on this site we have very extensive laboratories which enables us to do testing of vehicles full scale, uh, of vehicle structures, sections of track, and develop the electronic systems for control. And then nearby we have test tracks, and of course we have access to the real railway. Developments in computers have allowed the creation of the Integrated Electronic Control Centre, which employs a special program capable of controlling signalling in the face of service alterations, automatically calculating the most efficient way of returning to the schedule. This system will be installed at Liverpool Street over Easter and subsequently at York, replacing large multi-panelled mimics with a few VDUs. Down the road at Mickleover, at the end of a piece of the division's test track, is the aerodynamics laboratory. The high-speed trains of the future will bring their own peculiar problems, and the scientists here have built a unique model test track to find out how trains behave as they pass each other at speed. It can also provide information about trains running through tunnels, which may prove useful to more than one future project. This rig is not as high-tech as it may seem to the casual observer, as it's based on a series of large-diameter elastic bands. Just before the model is fired at high speed, the area is cleared of all personnel. The main interest in this sort of investigation is to look at the magnitude of the pressure pulses which are generated when trains pass one another. The pressure pulse is often felt by passengers as a train passes as a jolt or even a pressure sensation on the ears. And the means for minimizing the magnitude of the pressure pulse are to increase the track spacing or to increase the length of the train noses. But one can only gain uh, a certain amount from increase in the length of the nose is there comes a point where one is on the law of diminishing returns. We may see trains having noses as long as four meters but there is always the difficulty of accommodating long na nose trains on curves. Research at Derby has continued for over 20 years as the prototype HST shows. But this converted buffet car, Argus, allows investigation to be carried out on the move. The purpose of the coach is to sit within a test train and collect data from it. And the test train can be anything from a low-speed freight test to a high-speed passenger train going up to 150 miles an hour. The data is brought in from outside the vehicle and is brought on cables to an internal patch panel. And then from there, the signals are fed to amplifiers where they are raised in level sufficient to drive recorders and the computing outputs. The recorder here will record 42 channels of data real time. Data can also be brought out onto paper recorders where the engineer can see during the test what has happened to each of the channels. We can handle up to 60 channels at a time. For the convenience of giving the information to the engineer in a better form, we have a computer on board which enables the engineer to see in real time what is happening to the test. So here we see a display which is available to the test engineer. This can be running during the test and giving him the information. It can also feed information to the computer where it will be analysed and recorded for future use. We can take signals from the running tests and also feed them out into paper printed plots at the back. So as the new technologies of the 21st century merge with the best of the existing ones, 
The railways will continue to evolve to meet the changing demands of the future.